Can you hear me? There you go. Okay, I bet you can hear me now. Everybody let me know if you can hear me. I sure hope so. This has been a hairy day. All I hear is the sound of one hand clapping. Yes, you can hear me. Okay, problemo solved. Once again, my apologies for starting late. We are going to do top 10. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little like, ah. hope you guys had a good weekend. Uh, let me get my earbuds cranking, and we are going to listen, and then we'll figure out the whole green screen situation after the big show today. All right. So the first thing we have up today is Lil Bra, and this is from Lou Sid. Let's have a listen. I ain't trying to talk y'all today. Hey. I just want to holler at my little bras real quick. No. The little hoes. <laughs> You know, kickin' some game. Hey, go ahead and do your thing on them, little bruh. Hey, see you went and caught the chain on them, little bruh. Hey, you caught the old school thing on them, little bruh. Sheesh. You ain't have to get the frame on them, little bruh. Look, make sure you click trill. Man, ain't a boss if you got a lane with him. Can't teach being real. Make sure that's a trait that came with him. Off gate, if they act fake, then you can't hang, then you can't bang with him. Tell me if you can't gang with him, what's the point of being gang with him? Ayy, your dame got a little frame on a little bruh. Ayy, your dame got a little thing on a little bruh. Ayy, I know you had to put the game on a little bruh. Look, you say you trying to put a ring on a little bruh. Look, wait before you get the deal done, make sure you working with a real one. And she'll be still one when you get your break and the meals come. And before you put one in the oven, make sure y'all ready for a little one. Wrong woman can tear down the empire. The right one to help you build one. Look, trying to be who my little homies see when they look up. Try and kick them knowledge every time that we hook up. Keep doing your thing, yeah, we both come from the same. I don't even say his name, I just call him my little bruh. My little bruh, that's it, that's it, my little bruh. My little bruh, that's it, that's it, my little bruh. My little bruh, that's it, that's it, my little bruh. My little bruh, that's it, that's it, my little bruh. Go ahead and get the bag on them, little bruh. Go ahead and pop tags on them, little bruh. Say you switching up the swag on them, little bruh. Sheesh. We ain't even got a brag on them, little bruh. Look, you supposed to let the money talk for you. You ain't really gotta say much. Spread love to your day ones. They shouldn't really have to pay much. But pay attention to the side switches, cause the real dogs don't stray much. Just feel different when the bag heavy. The conversation don't weigh much. Look, go ahead and hit the gas on them, little bruh. Hey, go ahead and do the dash on them, little bruh. Hey, oh, you say you finna spaz on them, little bruh. Sheesh. Keep getting to the cash on them, little bruh. Hey, soon as you get your change up, guarantee they try to say you changed up. More money, brain, more problems. Soon as you go and get your name up. But as long as you stay solid, homie, when you make it there, you gon' remain up. Streets only talk about winners, and you gon' be the one they bring up. Watch. Trying to be who my little homies see when they look up. Try and kick them knowledge every time that we hook up. Keep doing your thing, yeah, we both come from the same I don't even say his name, I just call him my little bruh My little bruh, that's it, that's it, my little bruh My little bruh, that's it, that's it, my little bruh My little bruh, that's it, that's just my little bruh My little bruh, that's it, that's it, my little bruh Little bruh Well, that was cool. It's amazing how good you can make something with simple production. That really had simple production, but highly effective, right? Um, honestly, I don't know uh, if it was universal lyrics. Uh, probably not. Uh, sometimes it doesn't matter. Um, most of the time it does for film and TV, but we don't know that uh, Lucid was pitching that for film and TV or for record stuff. Uh, okay, let's try and make up for some of that lost time. This is called Lighthouse, and it's by Andrew Anka. I wonder if he's related to Paul. I found pictures of a place where we used to Live a life 
And like the colors that fade in the night We drifted away from the light And the walls that we met So the memories don't fade But we can leave that behind us Shake off the path And no one can find us And you can be the lighthouse to guide us Guide us, guide us I see that Painted blue And all the love I gave to you We share Our fears and our dreams We're scared To leave all those things And the walls that we made So the memories don't That was Lighthouse by Andrew Anka. I couldn't figure out what the percussive thing, it, it, I mean, it just could have been a hand on a drum or on an anything, could have been a tap on a microphone. Um, but it, it was obviously, got it had a delay on it and I couldn't tell what it was. Anybody else want to offer up an opinion on that? Because I'm not sure. Bonzo's here. Hey, Bonzo, how are you? Haven't seen you in a while. Hello, Don Coin. Good to see you. Um, all right, let's move on to number three because I'm still trying to make up a little time here. And then we'll do a little hanging out after we play these. Uh, Weekend Warrior. This is an instrumental. This is from Christopher Benz, also known as Kit Benz.
And that, my friends, is a great example of a cue. Um, everything about that works so well. You could easily imagine it. Um, it's called Weekend Warrior. Well titled, by the way. You could use it for like football highlight stuff, uh, football TV promo, any kind of sports promo, actually. But it sounded, you know, masculine, dangerous, fun, um, kind of all that stuff. And it stayed thematically the same from the top to the bottom or beginning to the end. And uh, every minute of it, was something that was usable in some context or another. So really, really good job on that kit, Benz. Um, now, and that was clearly an instrumental, which I should have said, I believe this next one is a song, and it's called My Fate Unknown by Casey Antonio, also known as Astrina. Everybody's got an AKA today. Let's have a listen to My Fate Unknown. So sorry, Estri, and I stepped on your ending a smidge. Anyway, really cool. The whole time I was listening to that as an engineer, producer, mixer, and going, that would be really tough to mix. There was a lot of stuff in there. Um, oh, no. Leave me alone, Adobe. It keeps asking me if I want to update uh, Adobe Flash Player. And then when you hit the update button, it says, sorry. Adobe Flash Player is not a thing anymore. Make it stop, damn it. Uh, I was on, the other day, I was on a, a video chat with one of my daughters, and every topic that we were on, um, 
on WhatsApp, which I love. The staff loves it. My family loves it. Use it a lot. It's great. You can call anywhere in the world for free. Really good connection. You can do a video chat anywhere in the world for free. Great connection. You can use it as a group text, a group video chat, just all kinds of stuff. It really got us through the, uh, the year of the lockdown. In any case, I was on it the other day. I forgot. Google owns it. And while I was talking in real time, if I talked about phishing, stuff about phishing would show up in the ads. If I talked about a new car, uh, you know, a specific car, if I mentioned Chevrolet, a Chevy would show up. So they were literally analyzing what was going on in the conversation. And in real time, Google was feeding it to my laptop. That's scary. That is big brother. Yep, the year of the lockdown in a world. Okay, let's listen to, this one's from Emma Johnson. It's called Setting Sail. Let's go, Emma.
Wow. Whoops. Stop. <laughs> Siri is acting up on my second computer here today. Stop it, Siri. And interestingly enough, this computer seems to not be charging. Oh, well, just all kinds of problems today. Oh, woe is me. Um, that was impressive. That was, once again, where are we? That was Setting Sail by Emma Johnson, right? Um, I think I've told you guys this story before, but uh, not everybody here has heard every single story I've ever told. But when I was in college, my sweet mate, we had the you know like adjoining rooms with a bathroom in the middle for four guys. It was disgusting in there, I gotta say. Um, anyway, I came home from class more than once to find Pat Metheny sitting in my sweet mate Brent Moorhead's room on the other side of the bathroom with a guitar amp uh, in the shower stall. Um, Pat Metheny, I went to the University of Miami, as many of you know, because I wear their sweatshirts all the time. Um, and uh, I was a business major and a music minor, and Pat Metheny was in the jazz school. Quite talented, very talented, as we all know. But anyway, I love jazz. Um, sadly, I took a turn away from jazz once I started working at Criteria and realized it was all about making hit records with hit songs and jazz didn't sell, but I still love it. Um, I, I Party school, yeah, I don't know, you know, it's got a reputation, Casey, as a party school. Uh, it's got a great law school, great med school, great business school, great um, marine biology school. Um, I don't know about the other departments. No, I won't say that. That would be inappropriate for a family show like this, but uh, I loved it. I loved all five years of it. <laughs> Chico is the party school. There you go. Anyway, the whole time I was listening to that, blown away by the quality of their musicianship, I was thinking, man, would I love to record that. It, it was recorded in a very dead room, and it reminded me of stuff from the 70s, and all the studios were like carpeted with shag carpeting on the floors, the wall, probably the ceiling. It kind of had that sound, um, and it needed to open up a little bit. It, needed to, it didn't make me feel like these cats were in a room looking at each other from eight feet or 12 feet away. It made me feel like stuff might have been overdubbed, which is impossibly hard to do on a thing like this, I would think. But uh, it sounded very dead, very dry. Till the very end, all of a sudden, there was some verb on the drums. Anyway, be my preference, but incredible piece of music. Amazing playing. Great job on that, Emma. Let's see what else we've got here. The next one is called Banger. It's an instrumental by G. Scott Russell.
That was cool. Another great example of, of a well put together instrumental cue, you know? It was just one thing, top to bottom, but it stayed interesting throughout. Um, Elliot's right. We should have more likes. You know why you guys aren't liking the show? Because I didn't hold up my really spiffy little like sign that uh, seems to drive the likes like through the roof. So there you go. Like us. Um, yeah, that was very cool. I've got to say, um, I think I told you guys, we, when we did the little walk around tour a couple of weeks ago of uh, the staff, um, let's see, Bria has moved over to marketing with me, doing marketing stuff. I've got all these things I've been putting off, putting off. So now I've got Bria working with me full time on marketing. I've got Liz working um, mostly on marketing stuff, like on social media stuff, doing some support on member services as well. Um, we have Ariana just rejoined the staff and she is going to be working 100% on big marketing projects as well. And Craig Pilo, who you guys loved at previous road rallies and loved him when he's been on Taxi TV, uh, actually loved him uh, when he was on uh, one of the listening panels last year and this year, I believe, at the road rally. Anyway, really, really happy. He is our new head screener. And Annie, who was our head screener for know, the last nine months or a year, whatever it's been, um, has moved over to writing the listings. So I tell you all that because Pilo, Craig Pilo is a fiend on production music, knows it inside and out like the back of his hand. And secret is he's Frankie Valley's drummer. So there you go. Um, and, and for many, many others, but Frankie Valley is like one of his ongoing gigs for years and years and years. And he loves working with them. Um, anyway, uh, Pilo is very, very strong on instrumental stuff. So I wouldn't be surprised if we uh, see more and more people, uh, more and more instrumentals making it into the top 10. Anyway, uh, here's another also known as this one is Ooh Baby Baby. Ooh Baby Baby. This is Priscilla Gregston, also known as Priscilla G. There's a woman who still has m many other alphabet letters of the alphabet to go. Yeah, that's true. Shit right here, 
Wow. That gets an A+. Plus. That was friggin' awesome. Love that track. That was like one of my favorite all-time hip-hoppy tracks ever. We're going to have to listen to that one again before the show's over. Um, Liz, can you do me a favor, please, and send Deb a link to that song? She's got to hear that. She would love it. Uh, wow. So, so, so impressive. This next one is called, this is, oh, by the way, that last one was Priscilla G. One more time. And this one's called Activate Dance Sequence 101. Um, <laughs> it's an instrumental. It's by Vikas Pawa, P-A-W-A. And I already accidentally played the first note. Here we go. One more time. Yikes. That was awesome. I'm so proud of our members. The music just keeps getting and better and better. Um, the production on that was cool. The engineering, I mean, the creativity is what's really mind boggling. But I, I've been in the business of making music, judging music, whatever, you know, getting it from point A to point B for 50 years of my life, I think now, right? Uh, yeah, pretty close, uh, 49 years, wow. And I'm amazed by the creativity of our members. Um, I, I hear stuff that's more creative coming out of you guys than I heard working in the studio with some major acts. So, you know, they had a thing and they did it. But, of course, I am listening to an assortment of people here. But just amazing, you guys. Really, really proud of you. All right. That, uh, once again, was Activate Dance Sequence 101 Instrumental by Vikas Power. Um, this one is by Matthew Solo. I'm having a tough time with your name, Matthew. I'm so sorry, but it's S O I L E A U. Swalu. French? Swalu. Uh, this is called Nip It, Nip it with a Bud. <laughs> I'm not even going to ask. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, they know me by name, my tab's open by four I'm the guy that lives at a second home bar I've got a regular stool right by the tip jar I learned a lot hanging out here Let me give you some advice for that tear in your beard 
When life gets tough, when the shine gets dull, don't let it get out of hand, don't let it get too far. Nah. Nip it with the bud, tap my glass, let's drink to a buzz So you can pace yourself, give it a little love You don't always need a reason, you can sip it just because We won't judge Life can be a half full frozen mug If you just go ahead And nip it with the bud Don't give it a second thought Join me down here where happiness can be bought If she lets you go, let it go Tell the bartender to let it flow Make some new friends while you're sipping Pour yourself a new beginning Nip it with the bud, tap my glass, let's drink to a buzz So you can pace yourself, give it a little love You don't always need a reason, you can sip it just because We won't judge Life can be a half full frozen mug If you just go ahead And nip it with a bud In this draft, come on, quench your thirst, get happy, heal your hurt. It'll make you feel better, it'll make you feel smarter. This stuff's better than bottled water. Yeah, and if it with the bud, tap my glass, we'll drink to a buzz. Or you can pace yourself, give it a little love. You don't need a reason, you can sip it just because. Nah, we won't judge. A half full frozen mug If you just go ahead And nip it with a bud Simplicity works. Nip it with a bud. Speaking of nipping things with a bud, um, I what are there like 13 states where pot is legal now in the United States? Read the label on this carefully. Pabst Blue Ribbon. Look down at the bottom. Cannabis infused, 10 milligrams. No alcohol. How ironic is that? Something made by Pabst Blue Ribbon with no alcohol in it. So, does does it come with like a bag of chips or a box of Dunkin' Donuts? Um, <laughs> I don't have words. What can I say? Look at that. <laughs> this is America now. Whoa, not very focused, but anyway. Wow. Yeah, you know, think about that. Budweiser, double entendre, right? <laughs> Nip it with a bud. Not in Canada. Come on, you guys, you know, for such a nice, polite, friendly country, you guys need to get with the program. Richard Emmett, how are you there, buddy? Good to see you. Um, who needs alcohol when you've got cannabis? Yeah, but wouldn't the smart thing be to have beer in there mixed with the essence of cannabis, 10 milligrams? Uh, could you imagine uh, drinking and driving with that? No, not good. Um, all right, one more. Uh, there are tons of ways to consume cannabis. I wouldn't know. Um Next one's called Watch Me Now, R River J featuring Anna Gracie. Um, and River J is Jessica Richardson, also known as River J. Let's have a listen to Watch Me Now. <laughs> Hey, hey. 
Incredible, right? Just amazing. So inspired, so creative, so original, and really well produced. Loved it. Um, what was the sound, the ticky, ticky, ticky thing? I, I couldn't figure it out. Um, let's listen to just a little smidge more of that. Can anybody tell me what this is? It sounds like hand claps with everything below like 3K just rolled off and then maybe a gate on or something. Really, really cool sound. I loved it. Um, anyway, love it. What was the song that I said I was going to play again? Because we do have some time. Um, was it Setting Sail, the Emma Johnson thing? Is that it? The jazz thing? Ooh, baby, baby, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, we're going to listen to this one again because we all loved it and we just love great music. Here we go. Ooh, baby, baby by Priscilla G. It's like a sign up in here. Mix on the beat. Shoot, my bad. I was double checking. We did, in fact, listen to all 10. It's like a sign up in here. Mix on the beat. Ooh, 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 ooh. Sexy kind of crazy body out of control. I get up, stay 
Amazing. I could listen to that thing like over and over on a loop for an hour and not grow tired of it. Uh, and every time you listen to it, you hear something else that's more interesting than the last time you heard it. So what else do you want to do? We've got about a half an hour left, you guys. Um, should we end the show early today? It's kind of a ragtag taxi TV day with the old background, green screen not working, um, audio not working, just everything melting down. It's so funny because I had the whole same template for the whole broadcast that I used successfully the other day. Go figure. <sighs> um, what do you guys want to do? No more music to listen to. Um, let me see something. Nah, nothing I feel safe in playing that's at hand. Sorry to say. Um, how does the green screen work? Well, I tell you. It's fascinating technology, actually. Um, there it is. And then you have to light the green screen. Throw a little light on that baby. Um, so that it registers well and... 18 goats, two mountain lions, that's not a good combo. Sorry to hear that. Um, oh, there's the guy with the noisy Porsche outside. So anyway, uh, what it does is the green allows a computer <laughs> to take everything that's not green out of the picture. Or, yeah, takes the background out. Green, the green disappears. Unfortunately, today, in my case, the green is not disappearing. Normally, I would be in this shot and it would be black behind me. No idea. Uh, it does change my complexion. But, you know, I'm chameleon like Marion, so there you go. Yeah, it, it's really hard. I have to be very careful in what I wear clothing wise using the green screen. Um, I have to adjust all the parameters. I'll tell you which parameters I adjust. I have to do, every day before a show, I have to do a brightness adjustment, contrast, gamma, hue, saturation, all that stuff to get this face to look somewhat natural. Um, when using the green screen. And if I wear like a, a navy blue shirt and I'm using the green screen because blue is a component of green, it too changes my face. Do I have to check the white balance before I go live every day? Yes, I do. Even though it's auto set on the white balance, not as automatic as I would like. Um, yeah, they do have blue screens. Um, <laughs> but veins that have no oxygen were making a weird effect, so I went to green. Interesting. Um, yeah, I've got the option of going blue on here if I want, but I don't think I will. <laughs> uh, it, it's really, there's an art form to it. Remember when I used to have like the ends of my hair look like little worms, crinkly worms crawling all over the place? Well, I finally found out that I needed more light on the green screen, which I can now turn that off. Whoa. The magic of TV production. Pretty cool. Um, is there a special program for it? It's built into the Wirecast program that I use to broadcast the show. Yep, it keys out everything else. Nico is right. We have no green in our skin tones. Well, let's see. Oh, I can't do that for some reason right now. Oh, there we go. I think I do have green in my skin tone, <laughs> as long as you're asking. Um, there we go. 
back to normal. I can do all kinds of interesting stuff. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm such a talented technical director on the video stuff. It's just like turning an equalizer on an SSL. Um, anyway, all skin tones come from the earth. Good to know. Anything else you guys want to talk about? Did I ever get an answer uh, about what you want to do with this next half hour? I feel sorry for the people who are going to tune in to see this show after the fact. It's kind of a messed up show in the beginning. started like 12 minutes late. Let's talk to the Hulk. <laughs> Is this program on each Monday? It is actually, 90%, uh, 95% of Mondays. Taxi TV, it's on Monday at four o'clock. During the lockdown, we did a thing on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at four o'clock called the Quarantini Happy Hour. And we're still doing those every now and then. Right now I'm doing like one a week. I'm just really trying to, we did it to help keep everybody sane during the lockdown, and it was actually great. It built a very tight-knit community of about, I don't know, 60 or 70 of us that were here most days. Uh, we would talk about anything from the gopher problem in my backyard to the coyote problem in my backyard to going to the grocery store wearing a mask and gloves and coming home and washing well, each piece of your fruit or vegetables with a little brush. Um, yes, my wife is still in Tel Aviv. I think they just changed the flight rules yesterday, but at this point, she needed to be back there uh, three weeks from now. So I said, why come home for three weeks? So it is what it is. Um, the Hulk could be the green screen. <laughs> That's true. I dare you to break my insanity? I don't even know what that means, Cass. <laughs> oh, there, I see you guys are having a little conversation there. Um, we need to order some marijuana drinks for the next show. Oh, Dan, I can't endorse such behavior. This is a family show. <laughs> Uh, no, 4 p.m. Wow, we've got new faces here today. 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. The quarantini to keep us sane. It's true, though. It, it was, you know, I, I almost hesitate to do quarantinis now because it's not under the same circumstance, you know. Um, I mean, a lot of people were really freaked out, uh, and rightfully so, in the beginning of the lockdown. It's just like, wow. We really can't go outside unless we absolutely need to. I did go outside in my backyard a lot, gotta say. I had a nice tan going on because I spent so much time out in the backyard. I noticed neighbors um, that were walking laps in their backyard, so thought that was kind of cool. Uh, speaking of coyotes, I've now got a pair of them that are showing up virtually every night, and that's why I have these nice bags under my eyes today is that Saturday night and Sunday night, in other words, Sunday morning and Monday morning, I had two coyotes that were literally right up against the outside of our house. Uh, I was sitting in the family room last night watching television, and all of a sudden the coyotes started howling. They were literally on the other side of the glass, maybe six feet away from me, howling up a storm. Um... And then they come back at like three o'clock in the morning and Saturday night going into Sunday morning, I just couldn't sleep, had a lot on my mind. I'd been on really late with my wife um, on a video chat and was thinking about all the stuff that we talked about. And then just, you know, when you feel like, ah, finally going to sleep, coyotes started howling. They drive me crazy. Um, they're not just noisy, they're really um, annoying. What year did Coyote Ugly come out? Eeks, I've gotta say 90s, early 90s. Um, 
Yeah, they are yappers, but the real but man, normally they're at least a couple hundred feet from the house when they're howling. Last night they were right there, and it's amazing how loud they are. Um, sell it to Yellowstone. I love that show. By the way, speaking of Coyote Ugly, uh, what's her name from Coyote Ugly is now a cast member on Yellowstone. Is Taxi still doing compilations? Yes. Um, I don't think we've done one very recently just because of the holidays. Um, but soon, I'm sure. I mean, you can imagine the quality of the compilations we send out now. And, and really, we just send them out. I and mean, People do end up getting deals from them. Um, who was it? Uh, Keith LeBrant told me that he had two or three different publishers all offering him deals on whatever song was on, or an instrumental track, I think, that was on that last thing. Um, oh, coyotes will definitely eat your small pets. Uh, and that's the thing. I've got elderly neighbors that we live in a cul-de-sac, and I've got some elderly lady across the street's got to be in her early to mid-80s. And she walks like a Yorkie or a poodle or something small and yappy and... Um, doesn't walk it on a leash because the dog, if she says, come here, the dog comes, you know, and she's walking it on a cul-de-sac. Sooner or later, a coyote is going to grab that little sucker and be gone with it. A dystopian holiday compilation. There you go. Oh, it's 2000, the coyote ugly was that? Wow. What's the girl's name that was the star of that? The blonde girl. She also had a not terrible TV show, but she was in the CIA, I believe. <laughs> Ken Besford howling. Uh, what did your neighbors think, Ken? Did anybody call anybody? Like, uh, do they have like child protective services for spouses? <laughs> Can we catch you up? <laughs> Piper Paravo, thank you. Um, yeah, it's funny seeing her as an adult now on Yellowstone. She She's aged a little, as people do, over 20 or so years. Um, still very pretty. Um, and sometimes the better actress, you know, I mean, I wanted to discount her because of Coyote Ugly. I thought she was just another cute blonde lady, but no, she actually, uh, and then the, the CIA show was not something that demanded amazing acting, I wouldn't say. Um, but she had some real moments in, in Tombstone, or Yellowstone, sorry. Yeah, you can always tell where the coyotes are. Whenever like an ambulance or a, a fire engine blows its siren, uh, the coyotes will start yapping wherever they are. Yeah, Y2K was 22 years ago. That's mind-blowing. I remember um, Deb and I and our daughters, Hannah and Gabriella, were sitting at the Shirelli's house that year. And we were all sitting there looking <laughs> at like the, the clock on his microwave and I don't know, Cell phones, computers, whatever, <laughs> nothing happened. <laughs> it was so boring. 22 years ago. Wow, feels like it was four years ago. Irish wolfhounds. When I was probably seven or eight years old, we had some friends that owned an Irish wolfhound. And I was eating a hot dog. I think we were at their house for a 4th of July barbecue. And the Irish wolfhound came up to me. I was a kid, little kid, and the dog put its paws on my shoulders, knocked me on my back, and then just stood there with its paws on my chest, drooling at the hot dog that, was, that I was trying to eat. <laughs> yeah, Microsoft did get a lot of publicity. The Apple car is coming ever closer to reality. I subscribe to a, a thing where you get updates on patents uh, as they relate to the automotive industry and the um, uh, autonomous vehicle industry more uh, particularly. And they just Apple just filed a patent for the mechanism that opens and closes the doors. It's got, you know, gull wing... Eh, I can't do it. You know what I'm saying. Gull wing doors that do that 
kind of like the, uh, they're not exactly, but similar to the ones that are on the, the Tesla. Yeah, the iCar. Oh, I didn't know that. Coyotes will act wounded to lure over a dog. Wow. Yeah, we'll still do the occasional quarantinis. You know, some days I just feel like hanging out with you guys or we have a reason to do one. Um, Worshipards, heading out. You are welcome. Musky Motors. <laughs> Does one bad apple car ruin the whole bunch? I don't know, but you know what? They'll probably have like a proprietary connector to charge it. Um, let's see what else. Uh, anything they can make proprietary. And it'll probably only come with one port. It'll be a USC, uh, a USB-C port that requires you to buy a dongle just to charge the damn thing. <laughs> I love Apple products. Generally speaking, I've been a big Apple fan for many, many, many years. Uh, my first computer in 1988 was a, a an Apple, like a, a classic, um, what did they call them back then, an iMac? No, before the iMac. Um, the Apple Macintosh classic, I think. You know, the beige one with like the eight inch wide screen on it. My company is serious. Do you have more info on taxi? What do you, what do you mean, Toriano, Kelsey, more info on taxi? Um, I'm the right guy to ask. I own the company. And I own a taxi. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, my wife has a perfectly good laptop, uh, uh, what do you call it, a MacBook Air, and it's not that old, and it's obsolete. She literally can't upgrade the operating system on it anymore. Ooh, Michael Lehman, like the tour around the taxi office. Darren Fletcher had an Apple IIe. I, I started the company, as I mentioned the other day, on an Apple IIc. Don't forget, you guys. Um, is it on? Here, let me look at the calendar. It's on the 24th. On the 24th, we are going over to the Paul Reed Smith PRS Guitar Showroom um, here in Los Angeles. I haven't stayed in contact with Steve Vai. I haven't seen him since the last time I went to, I think it was the funeral of my good friend's mother. And Steve is also good friends with him and, and we sat together, I believe, or we hung out at the wake afterwards. Um, it's funny, I have all Apple computers, everybody in the company has an Apple computer, I have an Android phone. <laughs> um, PRS is actually back east somewhere, but they have an LA showroom. Uh, there's a rehearsal facility that big bands um, get these big, like, indoor sound stages to rehearse on for a month before they go out on tour and PRS actually has a showroom over there so when you enter that complex to rehearse for your tour you can drop in the PRS showroom you can probably borrow a guitar for a day um, you can certainly come in there I mean at any point in time they might have somewhere between 50 and 100 guitars it'll just make you drool a lot and uh, some of them are like really impressive $600 guitars and some of them are like $60,000 guitars that are one-offs but they're all hanging there and um, I've been over there several times good friend of mine runs it 
And so we're going over to get some backstory and see some cool guitars and just hang out with him two weeks from today. Um, Elliot wants to borrow PRS. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, yes, the PRS segment will be also at 4 o'clock. And after today's little <laughs> meltdown, tech meltdown, I hope to God we don't have that over there. Uh, but that's why I did the walk around the other day. I wanted to see if I could just walk around on battery and uh, broadcast using Wi-Fi, and I did. So there you go, which reminds me, I need to pick up a 50-foot uh, Cat 10 table. What's a PRS? Uh, it's something that guitar players get on a monthly basis. It is the UK PRO. Very good. If I send you my email, will you get in contact with me? My company has a nice budget, and you are the man. Um, well, I've been called worse. Um, I, I don't really understand what for. Sorry, Toriano. Plastic really sucks. <laughs> we always called MCI consoles, uh, which were the happening thing back in the 70s, munchy, crunchy inside. Yeah, the PRO, PRS show will be fun. Anyway, all right, you guys. I am going to boogie out of here. Um, great hanging out with you. Sorry for the late start today. Stuff happens, you know. I fired it up. Everything looked like it was going to be fine and then went, uh -oh, not fine. So back to the drawing board. Have to create a new template. We will see you next week for another exciting episode. Hold on. There we go. See you next week for another exciting episode, damn it, of Taxi TV Live. Bye, you guys.